be reading two poems from my debut collection called Cannibal. And the book is called Cannibal because of the linguistic history of the word. The word cannibal is the English variant of the Spanish word caniba, which comes from the word caribal, a reference to the native Carib people whom Columbus thought ate human flesh and from whom the word Caribbean originates. So by virtue of being Caribbean, all West Indian people like me are already in a purely linguistic sense, born savage. This poem is called Home. Thank you. Have I forgotten it? Wild conch shell dialect, black apostrophe curled tight on my tongue, or how the Spanish built walls of broken glass to keep me out, but the doctor bird kept chasing and raking me in. This place is your place, reefed in red sargassum, ancient driftwood nursed on the pensive sea, the ramshackle altar I visited often, packed full with fish skull, bright with lignum vitae plumes. Father, I have asked so many miracles of it. To be patient and forgiving, to be remade for you in some small wonder. And what a joy to still believe in anything. My diction now as straight as my hair, that stranger we've long stopped searching for. But if somehow our half sunken hearts could answer, I would cup my mouth in warm bowls over the earth and kiss the wet dirt of home. Taste bogue mud and one long orange peel for skin. I'd open my ear for sugar cane and long stalks of gungo peas to climb in. I'd swim the sea still lapsing in its sodded frame. The sea that again and again calls out my name. Thank you. Usually at poetry readings I don't clap, so I like this. Um, this is a, the second poem is a new poem. Um, I'm here in the United States as an immigrant. I'm here, the, you, the government of the US designates me a non-resident alien. Whoa! Yeah. Okay. Get up there. Yeah. Just ask the crowd. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I think about what it means to be here as an alien. I think about what it means for my family members who are undocumented, what will happen to them. I've had to consider my blackness in a new way for the first time living here in America. And so this poem is, in, is my way of trying to make some sense of that. And this is called Double America and it's an ekphrastic poem based on a Glenn Ligon piece of the same name. And it has an epigraph from W.E.B. Du Bois and this poem is a, a palindrome writ large, which means the poem reads the same way forward and the same way backwards. The problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. W.E.B. Du Bois, Double America. Every black life goes the way of the bison eventually, forgotten bone threaded to earth, a gash of weeds goring yellow through my brother's skull. In the desert, buck full with your good lead, the last bald eagle rakes his clipped invisible wings down the parched highway where a river used to be. My father fretful dying because he was hungry. You and you daily, weekly, pass his living body cold in the street. Here, invisible is a way of being. 
My mother quiet, sweeping inside your mansions. My mother sullen, dreaming of a nation that might someday dream me. America, I am poor in all ways, fixed and unfixable. My poverty, a bullet point and a bullet hole. Endangered, my body soars its dark, unseemly flare across these decades, shot through with blues, chained face to face, my sister and I pleading, look at me. Ain't I a woman, America? Ain't I a woman, America? Chained face to face, my sister and I pleading, look at me unseemly flare across these decades shot through with blues and a bullet hole endangered my body soars its dark ways fixed and unfixable my poverty a bullet point and a bullet hole endangered my body soars its dark ways fixed and unfixable a bullet point that might someday dream me America, I am poor in all your mansions. My mother sullen, dreaming of a nation is a way of being. My mother quiet, sweeping inside. Pass his living body cold in the street. Hair invisible because he was hungry. You and you, daily, weekly, where a river used to be. My father fretful, dying, his clipped Invisible wings down the parched highway, buck full with your good lead. The last bald eagle rakes, goring yellow through my brother's skull in the desert. Forgotten, bone threaded to earth, a gash of weeds. Every black life goes the way of the bison eventually. haikus but I'm trying. Um, so this is my last poem. I've been getting my PhD at USC for the last three and a half years um, and about a year and a half ago one of the professors there, a white male professor, whose name is Mark Irwin, I'm gonna name and shame, he called me, he called me into his office to tell me with grave concern that he thought my poems had too much of a female conceit and that I would alienate male readers and editors. I let him know that it wasn't an accident. <laughs> and also that I didn't care. So often when I read this poem, I like to dedicate it to him. Mark Irwin at USC. This is center of the world. The meek inherit nothing. God in his tattered coat this morning, a quiet tongue in my ear begging for alms. Cold hands reaching up my skirt. Little lamb, paupered flock, bless my black tea with tears. I have shorn your golden fleece, worn vast spools of white lace, glittering jacquard, gilded <clears throat> fig leaves, jeweled dust on my skin, corn silk hair in my hems. I have milked the stout beast of what you call America and wear your men across my chest like furs. Stick pin fox and snow blue chinchilla, they too came to nibble at my door. The soft pink tangles I trapped them in. Dear watchers in the shadows, dear thick thighed fiends, at ease please. Tell the hounds who undress me with their eyes, I have nothing to hide. I will spread myself wide. Here a flash of muscle. Here, some blood in the hunt. Now the center of the world, my incandescent cunt. All hail the dark blooms of amaryllis and the wild pink Damascus, my sweet Aphrodite unfolding in the kink. All hail hot jasmine in the night, thick syrup in your mouth, forked dagger on my tongue. 
tongue, legions at my heel. Here at the world's red Mecca meal. Here Eden, here Bethlehem, here in the cradle of Thebes, a towering sphinx roams the garden, her wet dawn devouring.